So the first problem for today is a qualitative one, which means I'm going to ask you a question. Let's say you want to exit this lab inside there and there are three places where you can push the door, A, B and C. Which one will be the hardest to push to get out of the lab? Now, a reminder, quick reminder, uh, you need to think of where the pivot is first. So for the door, there's a hinge at the side, which we will call the pivot. There we go. So the door will swing about the pivot, open and close. So vote. Think which one will be the hardest to push. And let's take a look at the video to see what do we get at the end. All right, let's play. So first, that's me pushing at the handle. No sweat. Middle, Ooh, a little harder. And the last one, all the way near the hinge. Oof, that's really, wow, I was just hardcore struggling. And someone else saw me struggling to get out of the lab and they thought it was very funny. Okay, anyway, so if you chose C, that is the hardest to push. That's correct. Why is that? Hmm. Let's think of it this way. If I draw a beam representing the door, not oh, a great choice of color. There we go, beam. Then we have a pivot here. The hinge. If okay, if I'm looking from the top-down view, I'm trying to apply a force to get out. So if I apply from here with a very short distance only my talk is going to be so tiny because my talk will just be uh, force times this tiny distance one so the talk that i'm giving the door is not enough to uh, fight with the hinges and the other springs in there so it's a very small talk if i push from this part so small torque but if i push at the handle which is how people are supposed to open doors if i push at the handle this force let's say i use the same force uh the distance is much 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 longer it's like all the way so d2 so then my torque will be force times d2 much larger torque if i use the same force there Okay, so if you don't believe me, go out, try a room or anywhere that has a swinging door. Push at the handle, so easy. Try push near the pivot and see if you can do it. I just now I had to use two hands to actually open the door. So I need much, much, much more force to generate the same torque to get out. Okay, so that's the door question. How about some calculations questions? Fighting talks. This is a past year question on page 25 if you want to follow it on your handout. So here we have a horizontal metal bar. Look at the bar. Hinged at end, uh, end P. Hinged. Oftentimes, we'll just choose the hinge as our pivot. So there we go. We have a pivot. You can choose where the pivot is. Pivot ne not necessarily have to be the hinge. But if we got a hinge, let's make it the pivot. Okay, what's the total moment? Moment? About P. So total moment, you can also think of total torque. Is it going to move clockwise in the end or anti-clockwise? How are we going to calculate that? Now there's two forces. Okay, let's break it down step by step. Let's look at anti-clockwise torque first. So anti-clockwise torque. What are all the forces that will cause an anti-clockwise torque? So anti-clockwise, anti anti-clockwise. I, I don't know, the, 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 camera is, the camera is reflected, so... All my directions are a bit wrong. Let's see. Um, okay, if you look at the 16 Newton going up, this is going to cause an anti-clockwise rotation. Mm. So, let's see. What method shall we use? We have 30 degrees. Let's use the method where we make the force perpendicular. How about that? Okay, so we have some force. Which is now, we can use this, 60 degrees, more convenient. So what is the perpendicular force on this side? Calculate and see. You should get about 16 
adjacent hypotenuse cos 60. If you use the other angle 30 here, you will get something slightly different, but that's fine with me. It's just sine 30. Okay, so sine 30. Sine 30 cos 60, same thing. So now we have a force. Okay, force is perpendicular. Good. So you write it out. Force perpendicular times distance, which is, what's our force? 16 cos 60 times distance, 50 cm. Oh wait, don't write 50 cm. Torque has a unit. Newtons are already in meters. So let's change it all to meters for convenience. So 0 0.5 meters. Side note, this is in meters. Alright, so what do you get for your anti-clockwise torque? Grab a calculator and see. 16 cos 60 times 0 0.5. 4. 4. 4 what? What's the unit of torque? Think about unit of force and the unit of distance. Force, you can use the, 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 the short form version, so newtons. Distance, meters. So Newton meters. Actually, the answer will be Newton meters. That's why you want to make it Newton meters. Okay, so it's going to be an anti-clockwise moment of 4 Newton meters. How about clockwise? Clockwise, clockwise, clockwise. What's the force that's going to push it clockwise? Check the diagram. So we have a 5 Newton pulling down. That's going to cause the bar to rotate. Okay, this is going to be the direction of torque because of that force. So, A, eh, already perpendicular. Nice. Save us the trouble. So, we already have a perpendicular force. So, for this one, it will just be pretty straightforward. 5 Newton times the length 0 0.5 meters or so. That will give us 5 times 0 0.5, <clears throat> 2.5 Newton meter. Here comes the last part. These talks are fighting. Like arm wrestling almost. One say, let's go anti-clockwise by 4. The other one say, no, no, no. Let's go clockwise by 2.5. Who's going to win in the end? The bigger one, of course. So, draw it out. You're going to have clockwise torque of 4 Newton meter. And let me rub off this pivot a bit. Clear up some space. Then you have a anti-clockwise torque. Total is only one force, so 2.5 newton meter. Who's gonna win? Of course, the bigger one. So bigger torque is gonna win. Since that's the bigger one, let's say anti-clockwise is positive, and clockwise is negative. So the sum, uh, total moment, you can say, total moment will be everything that is anti-clockwise. So four. This is 4 Newton meter. I should put a sign inside there for you. Okay. Plus, add together. Anti-clockwise is minus. So minus 2.5. So 4 minus 2.5. 1.5 lah. I just check and see. 1.5. That's right. So you should have 1.5 uh, Newton meter. It's positive. And positive means going which direction again? Anti-clockwise. So this is 1.5 anti-clockwise because it is positive. So the directions matter. Just remember that. Clockwise, anti-clockwise, you choose where you want to be positive, where you want to be negative.